Greetings, fellow Earthlings and viewers across the World Wide Web. This is Tune 215. And right now, we're in the state of Pennsylvania. We're currently in the city of Philadelphia. Today, we're going to be doing a walking tour of West Kensington, Philadelphia, PA. This is a neighborhood located in North Philadelphia, located in the North Philadelphia East Corridor, not to be confused with Northeast Philadelphia, but we're on the north side of City Hall, North Philly. It's about 93 degrees outside right now. It's a sunny day. We're going to be walking towards Front Street, which is known for having the above ground L train tracks. We're about five minutes away from there, give or take. Figured I'd start on this side just to show you guys an area that most people are not familiar with. Every time someone thinks of the word Kensington, they get the imagery of Kensington and Allegheny, where the opioid crisis epicenter is taking place. That's located right before you hit the Harrow Gate and Junietta community. So how far are we from Kensington and Allegheny? Right now where we're at, if we were driving, we're probably about a good five to seven minutes away. If we're walking, if we walk to K&A from here, it would probably be 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how fast you walk. Might be a little less if you're a speed walker, might be a little longer if you walk slow. But we're not gonna go up to Kensington and Allegheny, we're gonna stay on one of the lower Kensingtons. Remember, keep this in mind while we explore today, West Kensington. There's four separate neighborhoods that are all next to each other with the name Kensington. West Kensington, East Kensington, traditional Kensington, AKA North Kensington. That's where it's located from where we're at right now. And then you have Old Kensington, O-L-D-E, Old Kensington, AKA South Kensington. So right now we're on West Kensington. Right now we are on York. We just came off of Bodine. We were on the 2300 block of Bodine. Right now we're walking towards American Street. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to start the tour here is because there is a large project that's been going on here for the last, I would say two to three years. I documented this block before they started the project. And this is about two years after being close to complete. This is an industrial street called American Street. There's a lot of industrial style warehouses. On our left, you'll see the Coffco office furnishings building. In front of us, we got the American Supply Company with that huge mural. See that huge mural? And we got a lot of big warehouses, right? But there were some train tracks that were located on the center of the street before. This street used to be really wide i mean it's still relatively wide but they cut it down to one lane on the left one lane on the right and then as you can see there's two bike lanes so you can actually use the center before there was train tracks running straight through here but due to this project not only did they put a nice little walking track or a walking trail they also put grass so they lined the center of the street with grass and this spans for about, I would have to estimate, maybe a good dozen or so blocks. I'm gonna cross. We're gonna continue moving forward. Right now we're on York and American Street. We have a soda and chip distributor on our right hand side. It's like the stuff for the grocery store. You can come here if you have a business license and get some wholesale goods like sodas, snapples, and all that. We have a smart car on our left-hand side. This little red Smarty. Okay, we're approaching Phillips Street. So West Kensington has a lot of gentrification that's been taking place. As you can see on my left, there is a brand new building being made. And you're gonna see that throughout West Kensington. But we're gonna make this right. I'm gonna show you this block because it has a lot of artwork. Graffiti has a lot of artwork, which is pretty cool. They got the Count Chocula dude from the box of cereal. A one, a two, a three. <laughs> so, on my right, you have a bunch of graffiti, tons of it. 
And then on my left, signs of gentrification. You got new buildings being made. There used to be a lot for many years that had um, cars in it. It's like random vehicles. And they recently sold it off. And within the last year, they made that project. It looks like it's going to be probably like apartments. Check out this Monte Carlo on my right hand side. See this Monte? Looks like the 87 body. Luxury sport. 4.3 fuel injected. Got a nice Scooby Doo mural on my right. Now, on my left, we got some two story homes. So, the closer you get to Front Street, which is the train terminal that runs over Kensington and Allegheny, the closer you get to that, the more the gentrification uh, takes place. The further you get away from Front Street, the less gentrification you'll see. But it's happening throughout the whole entire neighborhood, just at different paces from different areas. I know if you go to like East Kensington, East Kensington has already been overwhelmed. All the lots are pretty much bought out. So it's not as many open vacant spaces as it is, as it is over here. Look at, look at all of that uh, dumping on my right. That's illegal dumping. They put all of those tires there. As you can see, there's a bunch of trash here. People go and take their items and throw them on the back blocks because these blocks are less traveled on. The part that sucks is the people who actually live on these blocks. There's six or seven houses. They got to, you know, drop through here every day, daily, seeing that junk. And they can clean it up. And then a month or two later, other people will do the same thing. So we're on Dolphin. This is Philip and Dolphin. We're crossing over Dolphin. If you keep going straight, you'll head towards the York Dolphin Blue Line train station. I'm going to take this up one more block and then I'm going to walk left. I'm going to try to take you through some, uh, businesses and or just organizations or just signage that says West Kensington so you guys can know we're in West Kensington. Now this neighborhood used to have a really big uh, drug epidemic too, I guess you can say. They used to sell all the traditional items here. Marijuana, Coke, dope, crack, all of that. They used to sell that in this area. The only thing I don't think that really popped off here was fentanyl. Fentanyl is modern, just in general, to the city. But out of all those things that I just mentioned, what do they sell here? They probably, you could probably find bud, weed. You could probably find it from, if you know someone who knows someone, you know? But there's not really posted up. You know, people out anymore, like back in the 80s or back in the 90s where people used to post up. Check this out. It's like a tiki face, you see it? It's hidden inside the, the, the green vegetation. Look at over here. Remember all them tires that we saw up the block? Look at this. They made that face out of tires. Look how cool that looks. It's a gigantic face made out of tires, guys. It's called the Sculpture Garden. Look at that. It's awesome. Bring your own What's that say? It doesn't say beer. It says Bioc? Pioki? I see a B. B E O K E. Bring your own book. I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I know about bring your own beers. So look at these are new properties. I actually just saw a late model 2022 Corvette parked here not too long ago, a couple days ago, telling me that it's a good um chance that maybe a resident that moved in owns that vet i don't really care for vets but that just goes to show you and the tags i believe the tags are florida you'll, you'll tell that the neighborhood is getting an influx of new residents because of the tags the license plates at Ross susquehanna avenue look at that building right there See how they're working on it? They're doing the front of it. And they're actually building something right here on the side of it. That lot on the side is being built. So we're approaching second. We're on second in Susquehanna. So there's a bus that always crashes into that lottery place right there in the corner. See that lottery place? There's a bus that, that runs through here. It's the 89 bus, either the 89 or the 39. It comes from right here in front of us. And you see this building? They got a couple poles around it because it's been hit, I think, on two or three occasions. So, you know, insurance is probably high for that building. And then you see that ATM over there? That ATM 
when they were blowing up ATMs here in Philadelphia. You remember, remember? If you remember on the news, there was tons of ATMs being blown up. That was one of the ones where they blew it up to try to get the money out. But the person who set the dynamite passed away right there. So he didn't get lucky. I don't know if it was a malfunction in the dynamite and the explosive, but he died right there. And it was all on the news. The news was out here and everything. So there was a building right over here. This is Second Street. There used to be a warehouse right there, but they knocked it down recently. Someone passed here. I believe two people passed here. I know for sure Little Rock passed here, but I believe uh, the homie Drama, one of his homies Bear, might have passed there because his Rest in Peace Memorial was there also for quite some time. So we're approaching Palethorpe, passing the Chinos on our left, Chinese store. That's what you call them, the Chinos. New number one China kitchen. Somebody else also passed away on my left-hand side uh, many years ago. I believe it was a buddy of mine's father, an older, an older guy that I know. It was his pop. This house right here on my left is new. See this? They they actually just covered this mural. You see that mural? Because, and they're building one back there. And that house ended up blocking the whole mural. So right now, we're on Hancock and Susquehanna. Look, you got West Kensington Ministry. You see that right there? WKM. It says West Kensington Ministry. You see that? So that verifies that we are in West Kensington. We're on Hancock and Susquehanna. I remember many years ago, a gentleman was running through here on a snowy day he got shot he got shot in the opposite corner he ran to about here and he collapsed he collapsed let's cross hancock he collapsed right there next to that fire hydrant where that honda the suv is right there he collapsed right there and died in the snow um this building right here used to be a tuberculosis center back in the day it was a medical office as of most recently within the last 20 to 30 maybe even longer 40 years the owner uh, was the executive director of this organization. She was a lawyer. She, her name was Pat Miss Patricia De Carlo. She was a lawyer and executive director for the nonprofit organization in this community called North Square, which serves the community. Anyway, that was her house. Um, I believe it's still hers, it's still in the family. And then another gentleman passed away over there. There's a pole. He passed away, I believe, October 29th. October 29th of 2017, he was a gun down on that corner and there was no witnesses. There's no cameras in this corner, no witnesses. So they have a reward there. I think it's like a 20 or $30,000 reward. If anybody knows any information leading to his crime. Happened in 2017, we're in 2022. No one still came forward. This park right here is North Square Park. Before we get into North Square Park, I'm gonna walk over here just to show you guys this block right here. This is the 2200 block of Hancock. Back in the day, there used to be a whole bunch of young homies out here, 20, 30 teenagers playing handball on the side of that building. We had to wait for traffic to go by in order to continue playing. On this block, this is a three-story row home block. You'll see a lot of new buildings um, squeezed in between. For example, right here, you see the, those two buildings, they look very oddly placed. But there's about a good handful of new buildings on this block. We're gonna make this right because there was another person who was gunned down, I would say in the probably early 90s, he was gunned down and he died right here on this little block. So back in the day, this block used to be called the Little Block. Go, Yo, what's up, you trying to go to Little Street? <laughs> that wasn't the name of it, but that's what we called it. So we're passing Mudder. There's police cameras right here on this corner police cameras yeah he died right here there used to be a memorial right here for him but i guess over the years you get forgotten so especially when it's been that long ago so speaking of people being gunned down i had i guess you can say an uncle who was an in-law actually he was my pops um, lady's brother so to me when i was growing up he was my uncle see those two new houses over there the two tall ones that are randomly placed so we're gonna make a right on Masher. So the one that I was talking about, the one who was like an uncle to me, he was killed, he was gunned down right here, right here. This is where he was gunned down at. At the time, I believe he was 17. I was young, I was probably like nine, 10. 
and um, they did a drive-by. They shot him twice in his back. They got out and walked up to him and put one in the back of his head. So that happened right here on this corner. So it's very interesting. If you pay attention to them stories I just told you, there was literally a person shot on all four corners here in West Kensington. Interesting, right? Sad, but true. So these houses right here that are directly next to the park are extremely large. These aren't even traditional houses. These, and a, a lot of them are apartments. That's how big they are. The front facade is huge. The doorways are huge. The windows are huge. So this was once a German community back in the day. This was also a funeral home. This building right here was a funeral home for many years, but the North Square Civic Association, which is the nonprofit that manages this community and serves this community, um, across the street, this is Norris Square Park. So hence why that was Norris Square Civic Association's main headquarters. Now they're no longer called Norris Square Civic Association. I believe they're called Norris Square Community Alliance. So this is that building that was the tuberculosis center on my right. Remember we just talked about it. So if you ever seen the movie Rocky, if you ever seen the movie Rocky, you will recall that the little short guy that owned the pet shop, well, that pet shop's around the corner. It was also shot here in West Kensington. But that little guy used to own that building right there, the little short guy. He used to own the dry cleaners. Now, speaking of movies, they shot the movie called Mechanic with a K at the end right here in one of them apartments. You see them two or three buildings right there next to the new building? That's an apartment. Well, guess what? The Mechanic shot some scenes here. Look at this is West Kensington Church, North Square United Presbyterian Church. Now, a reverend called Reverend Gage used to run that church, but he passed away. The late, great Reverend Gage. He was a nice gentleman. He was an older Caucasian gentleman, probably in like his 70s. See, this is the gentleman that passed away here. His name was Frank. Justice for Frankie, as you can see. And his memorial's been up here for quite some time. His memorial's been here for quite some time. Remember, he passed away in 2017. They still haven't took it down. So this is Norris Square Park, located in West Kensington. This park actually, believe it or not, was the original Needle Park. So you guys hear Needle Park and you automatically think of Kensington or you think of uh, McPherson Square, which is located in the Kensington neighborhood, North Kensington. Look at these little pathways, these are new. Those little walkways that go straight through the grass, completely new. This jungle gym, completely new. That jungle gym in the center was one of the original ones. That basketball court over there, they repaved it and they hooked it up. Now, I wanted to come through here to document this because this is in the process right now. Now, this if you're familiar with this neighborhood, this was never here. We only had that one jungle gym in the center of the park. This is completely new and completely fresh to the layout of this park. This is all brand new, y'all. So this is cool. Now, a lot of these buildings that are across the street from the park, they're apartments. A lot of them are apartments. Look at, but they put new benches. That big tree right there has been in this uh, park for a long time. It's been a part of this community. That big tree is one of, that is the biggest tree in the park. And look at, they put this over here. This is new. So yeah, this was originally the original Needle Park. Now what do I mean by that? See, this is all new too. There used to just be swings here. But then they uh, took out the swings and now they made all this. So back in the day, there used to be substance abusers here too. People utilizing needles and falling asleep next to the trees. And so there was, there was community residents. Like for example, there was a resident um, that goes by the name Lisa Segarra. She's a resident and also a neighborhood employee. And she worked for North Square too. There's two uh, community organizations that serve this area. Well, you got North Square, which is now Community Alliance. Their new main headquarters is right here in front of us on our left. You can go there for workforce development, resume preparation, computer literacy, after school programs, some basic health care, uh, basic like food vouchers, all, all sorts of, of help. Um, so anyway, this is their main headquarters. So you have North Square Community Alliance that serves this community, and then you got North Square Neighborhood Projects. Well, Lisa Segarra, she works for both of them at different periods of her life. Well, anyway, she was part of the original group with Miss Patricia DiCarlo, the one I said in the beginning too, who I, we, we, we looked at her house, the really big house on the corner. 
that I said used to be a tuberculosis center back in the day. But well, anyway, that was the one that, that was the one that um, also was part of redeveloping this community and fighting for back against the drug crisis back in the day, which was at that time, I'm assuming crack and probably dope, but most likely crack. Cause I remember when I was a kid in the Kensington neighborhood, I used to see people walk around with pipes smoking crack. And right after they would buy the crack, they were smoking on the corner. So that gray building on the corner, that's El Sabor. That's a restaurant, Spanish restaurant. This is North Square right here, this church. Now this used to be called St. Boniface Church, Boniface. There was a giant church right here in the middle of it too, but they knocked it down. St. Boniface Church had a rectory, had the convent building. This whole entire square block was a Catholic church. So as you can see, they still got some of the church back there standing, some of the original building, but the main actual church front that was here, they knocked it down and they made those. Yeah, they made those. Those were selling, I believe, for about $382,000 each, almost 400,000. Now, this is the 19122 area code. If you go one block to your left, you'll be in the 19133 area code. Houses in the 19133 area code, as you can see, look at that, Kensington Hospital. You see, in case you didn't believe that I was in Kensington right now, there goes more affirmation for you. Um, so these houses right here, yeah, they were about 400K. Now, this is Masher Street, we're passing Masher. Now, in 19133, which is one block to the left, this past year, a house sold for 550,000. Another one sold for 430,000. And a couple of them sold for 380. So an easy half a million dollars to our left-hand side, right? All these properties around the park go for a little bit more, right? That's, you can see Kensington Hospital. That's a dentistry place and they do a couple other services there, but I know the main thing was dentistry that I used to go there for. Um, and there was also like one of those um, rehab methadone clinics right here on my right before. So anyway, so um, this was one of the neighborhoods that had a crisis back in the day and cleaned up. And if you look at it now, look at this park. This park for the most part is beautiful. So if you sit from over here, you'll see the actual, a lot of the original um, stuff. Now there, be forewarned, there was a different jungle gym back in the day. You see that jungle gym that's in the center? There was a whole different jungle gym back in the day. but in like the mid to late 90s they upgraded it to that red and blue one that you see now but they're gonna end up revamping this park they're gonna continue revamping it and changing out different um, materials and stuff because what, what it is they got new people coming and living in the community so they basically want to revitalize it so when people move in they feel like the money is worth it you know what i mean <laughs> all right so we're on howard 2100 block of Howard. This is the intersection of Howard and Diamond. Now on the Philadelphia Police YouTube, there was a CCTV from this pharmacy right here. That pharmacy's camera caught a robbery right here on this corner. Somebody was going into their trunk. I think it was parked right here where this white car was at. Somebody pulled up and jumped out with a gun and robbed them. Yep. So we're walking towards Hope Street. You can see Hope Street. You see that big giant milk jug that's up there up top called Harbison's Milk and Ice Cream um, thing, thingy majiggy. That Harbison's Dairies building was abandoned for many years. They recently bought it within the last five years, revitalized it, and now they are renting it. Now it's funny because that's that building is actually located on East Kensington. We're approaching Front Street. Once you cross Front Street, you're no longer in West Kensington. You're in East Kensington. But look, what do we have here? We have new buildings. That's brand new, brand new building. That was an empty lot. Over here, this used to be one of the Kensington offices. It was closed for many years. Look at it, they, they revitalized it and they opened it back up. There used to be a little garage over there, am I right? A little quick, quickie, quick stop garage. They bought it. They're gonna build houses right there. You look at the, that blue vinyl siding, again, they, they built, it looks like apartments. If you go straight up this avenue, now, we're walking here, boom. We're on Diamond and Front Street. We're on Diamond and Front. If we cross the street, we'll be in East Kensington. If we go explore all that, that's East Kensington. If we make a right and we go down here, about a block or two, we'll enter South Kensington, AKA Old Kensington, right? You go over here, we just came from West Kensington. 
You can see the Kensington sign. Matter of fact, there was a movie shot right here, Shooters with Mark Wahlberg. Watch it. There's a scene right here on this very corner where the cop is, is handcuffed to this building right here. He's handcuffed right out here. And then you see a shot of the church that used to stand there, St. Boniface, and you see this shot right here. So they shot a movie right under here, Shooters. Shooters with Mark Wahlberg. Now, if we walk up here and we take this straight up, it'll be where our other video started at. The most recent Kensington video. The most recent Kensington video that I had did when I started out from this end on West Kensington, we'll walk straight up there. And then if we follow the train in about five to seven minutes, we'll start seeing the opioid addicts, people who are addicted to the substance. So over here, you got a couple new buildings. Buildings being revitalized, those buildings are new. Look how f new those front facades are. There used to be, uh, what you call it here, a horror store. It was about two, three horror stores. My buddy's uncle used to own it. Yeah, my buddy's uncle used to own the horror stores that was there. Edwin, the one who owned that restaurant, El Sabor. Well, his brother used to own this. So a lot of these buildings, they've already been bought out. Some of them have been knocked down. Some of them are waiting to be revitalized. But this right here, all along my left, there were several other buildings right here. We got the train about to pass us up top. So remember the Rocky movie, right? This is where they shot the Rocky movie at, right here. Now the famous Rocky gym from Rocky One is right there, boom. That's the gym. So if you were to watch Rocky right now, that's the gym that they shot it at. So you'll see him walk into that building, they show outdoor shots. And the pet shop, the pet shop I was referring to used to be right here. This is where the pet shop was at, but they recently just sold the pet shop within the last three years, three to four years. They knocked it down and they're working on it. So you got a new coffee shop on my left. Row Home Coffee on our left, that's brand new. On our right, you got a couple new buildings. Remember, if you cross that side, you see that's the Rocky Gym. If you cross that side, you see new buildings. That's East Kensington. East Kensington has a lot more gentrification than West Kensington, but West Kensington isn't safe from it because West Kensington, that's, that's been a 20 plus year in the process um, in the making. You got Stelio's Pizza. That's a pizzeria right there that people like to eat at. Stelio's Pizzeria. You got new buildings over there. You see right there on that corner. Where do you see those tall, skinny buildings just placed, randomly placed at places? You can see where they drop them in like Legos. So we're on Susquehanna Avenue. We're on front of Susquehanna. I'm gonna cross here. This used to be, all right. So originally to my knowledge, this was a Pet Boys way back in the day. Then Fine Fair bought it. So Fine Fair bought this, which was a local supermarket. Fine Fair bought it and look it. They served this community for over 20 plus years. They served this community probably for 25, 30, 30 years. I, I don't know when exactly, but they just left like two years ago. I guess they probably received an offer. See everything around here in West Kensington is getting bought out and they're getting offers. Look at that, they put a roof deck up there. Everything over here is is is, is gold. It's it's like valuable, precious real estate. It's a hot com commodity because you got the train right up the block. As you can see, West Kensington, although there were some some rough blocks that we walked through in the beginning, like I said, the further away from the train, the less gentrification. The closer you are to the train, the more gentrification you'll see. For example, we're one block away from the train, and look at this block. I'm about to take you to this block and look at this whole entire block. Mind you, this is where you can get your muffler fixed. If you have a muffler and you're in the Philadelphia area, you come here and you get some quality work. Check out that classic. Classic Toyota wagon, beautiful. But look, this is right next to the train. Brand new homes. Again, right here, brand new homes. And people say, Tune, I don't foresee them revitalizing Kensington. That's the same thing they said about this neighborhood too. And now look at it. You got so many people coming in to move here. Look at that. 
You see how they try to stay with a similar facade with the bricks? This was all empty, guys. This wasn't nothing. There was no buildings here. It's not like there was buildings here. No, this was an empty lot. And within the last two years, they've been working on these. Notice how some of these got like a different facade. Then you got some lots that are still standing. There's some still vacant lots or lots where people don't want to part ways. They might own it. They might live on the Howard side and own it. So they don't want to part ways, you know, because everybody's receiving offers nowadays. The bad thing is that they have like sharky tactics where they continuously send you the same document. Do you want to sell your home? We buy cash now. You know, we buy homes now, cash now. Um, let us make an offer. This, that, and the third. Like, to a point where it becomes intrusive. Like, bro, like, if I'm not trying to sell you my property, <laughs> stop bothering me. Waste one, two, maybe three tops. But if you're sending me 15, 16 documents that keep trying to insist to buy my property, that's because they know what it's what it's worth, Jay, you know? Look at this, a four-story building. Four stories, brand new. This wasn't here when I was a kid growing up. This wasn't here two years ago, three years ago, this wasn't here. Yeah, this wasn't here. Now, this is West Kensington Library. The back of this building right here, this is West Kensington Library. Now, I'm gonna make, should I make a right? No, let's not make a right because I already showed you guys this corner. Oh, there's a pump on over there too, that's pretty cool. Fire hydrants are a thing in Philly. In the summer, when it gets hot like today, it's very humid in the 90s. They turn on the fire hydrant and you, you can just get wet in it. They just stand in it, you know. But anyway, I kind of want to show you all this West Kensington Library. Maybe I'll cross the street because I don't want this to look repetitious from the tour I recently just did when we walked from West Kensington to North Kensington. Look at So this block right here, check out that big rooster painted over there. Cool, right? Look at there's another pump all over here. Look at, we're on Dolphin. I'm about to make a right, but I want you to see there's a fire hydrant on over there and there's somebody getting wet inside the fire hydrant. I actually know her. Her name is Patricia. Patricia. It's funny because we were talking about another Patricia earlier. So yeah, that block over there is pretty vacant. That also goes to the back of these storefronts, which are no longer thriving anymore. And again, if you didn't believe we were in Kensington, Kensington Library. So I recently just did a, a, a walk here when we ended up at North Kensington. This is where it started at. But I walked on the left side. I'm gonna cross the street and walk on the opposite side so that you guys get a better view. cross right here so that's East Kensington over there and remember if we go down here we go down to South Kensington or Old Kensington if we're talking about a compass north is in front of us south is behind us east is on our right west is on our left look at East Kensington East Kensington has tons and tons of new buildings squeezed in everywhere Look, they just built this here. There used to be a Payless there, an original Payless building that burned down. Look, at the Payless burned, and then they built this gigantic behemoth of what looks to be like it's gonna be like an apartment, maybe like a luxury apartment situation. Look at all the materials out here. You see, if this neighborhood wasn't worth nothing, then there'll be no reason for them to build here. But, the fact that this neighborhood is located in a perfect perimeter is located at a nice geographic location because you got the highway I-95 where you can go to 95 south to Florida or 95 north to Maine. That highway is just five minutes away from here. If you want to go to Center City, Center City is 10, 15 minutes from here. If you want to go to West Philly, West Philly is about 20, 25 minutes from here, depending on traffic. You know what I mean? You want to go to New York? New York is an hour and 40 minutes from here. You want to go to Delaware? Delaware is 30 minutes from here. And so on. Everything is relatively close. And you're not far from the airport either. The airport is like 
like 20 minutes away from here, 20, 25 minutes away from here. And being located right here next to this train makes it so convenient. Look, so if you go down here, you go to East Kensington and look at East Kensington got a bunch of new buildings. Those two big giant, giant buildings right there with the gray and the white and the dark gray and light gray, those weren't there. That was empty. That was actually a factory like 15, 20 years ago that burned down and a firefighter lost his life in that factory. So it was a vacant lot for many years. And then after the vacant lot, they bought it out and they made all new buildings. So it's gonna be like new lofts, new condos, things like that. So this is where we was walking at the other day. If you watched the other one the other day, you remember when I said they used this budget mobile to shoot the Transformers movie? Well, if you watch the movie Transformers, I think it's Transformers part two or three. They use this building right here in West Kensington on my left. That budget mobile, that used to be a go-go bar back in the day. Well, anyway, they used this corner for the movie. But the trick is, is that they didn't want to make it look like Philly. So they try to, this building right here on my left, this shot is in the movie. They try to make it seem like it was in New York. So I guess they use that for for the cost efficiency because it's cheaper to shoot in Philadelphia than it is to shoot in New York. So this is uh, Hunter Elementary School right here on my right hand side. This school is relatively new. It was made within the last 20 years. Um, this actually used to be a block right here. You see this block, this is Hope Street. This block used to run straight. Used to run straight across here to my right. Look at this is this is the little fire hydrant. And as you can see, they got some new houses right here. And these houses are brand new too. Those houses are new. So these houses are relatively new too. The ones on my left and the ones on my right. The ones that look like townhomes. This was actually a project made by North Square Civic Association. That nonprofit that I was talking about. They made these two blocks of houses under a funding grant uh, for low-income housing. These houses sold for, I think, 130000 each. Look at them. I'm going to show you what they look like. Now, mind you, they've, they've been up for about 12 to 13 years. These houses right here. These were all low-income houses for minorities. First-time homeowners, first-time homeowner grants and stuff. This is West Kensington. You got the train. The train is driving by. I'm gonna go straight just so that you guys can see a different block. So you see that cube, that box house right there? That's new. As you can tell, I mean, it's, 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 it's pretty common sense. The oldest buildings here are probably those two little short ones. Those are the oldest buildings than this one on the corner, but they did some remodeling up top on the second floor. Then it was these, the North Square homes. Then it was this last one right here. So as you can see, the style changes. And this is Hunter Elementary School. Now there was an original Hunter Elementary School around the corner. The original building is only located two blocks away on Dolphin, Masher and Dolphin. They were supposed to make the original one into a police station. That's what they said they were gonna repurpose the building to, but they never did. This is the schoolyard, all the kids play. I believe this is a kindergarten to eighth grade school. So we're gonna be walking towards York. Once we get to the corner of this block, that building on the right that's new. Originally, there used to be a water ice factory there, a little water ice private business. They used to sell you buckets of water ice wholesale. Yeah, but they, I believe, sold their building. A lot of people are taking the offers. I guess you can't blame them. A lot of them spend most of their lives here, lived here for 20, 30 years, maybe, you know, second generation, West Kensington residents, you know. Maybe parents lived here, maybe, you know, grandparents lived here, or whatever the cause may be. Um, and they're tired, you know, they're tired of it. You know, sometimes the city life um, gets the best of people. There's some people that I, that I know that lived in this neighborhood forever and they're gonna die in their house. They don't wanna, they don't wanna sell. There's some people that's like that, that they refuse to sell, refuse. You see that building right there on my right? That's a brand new building. That's more modern than all the ones on these four corners, or on the three corners, with that being the fourth corner. 
So Front Street turns over into Kensington. Kensington Ave. Now remember, we're in the Kensington neighborhoods, but there's Kensington Avenue. If you go three blocks straight right here, you'll walk right into Kensington Avenue. Now you just walk to the to the bottom of it. It's not even where all the, the opioid crisis is at right this second. You'll basically be at the bottom of it. This is Waterloo Playground over here on my left-hand side. Waterloo Playground. In the summer, they have the pool open for the kids. Summer camps, summer programs go there and they utilize that park for swimming. You have some original houses. And again, you're gonna see these new buildings. This is a new building. Estimated cost. Wow, $1.25 million. Notice of commercial permit. Wow. Plumbing permit, $46,000. Um, fuel gas permit, $63,000. Notice of commercial building, estimated cost $1.25 million. Notice of fire suppression permit, $23,000. So this is over a million dollar project right here in West Kensington, as you can see. There you go, that's, that's facts, that's proof. Proof. Now, whether you would personally live here or not is really irrelevant because people are moving here. They're selling these things like hotcakes. And I'm telling you who's moving here, the people who come from the country. Those, those country homes, especially like the descendants. Like, you know, their moms, their grandpops probably grew up in, you know, Kansas or in Kentucky or let's cross the street here. Or in Kentucky or you know, one of them, Texas, you know, one of them places. But look it, they come here and they're the offspring. They're the descendants. And they're like, man, look, we're tired of the country life. We want the convenience that the city has to offer. Maybe work might bring them here. They might work, you know, in downtown or work within Jersey. The Indiana tags right there. Look at in Indiana. That's an example, Indiana tax or somebody from Indiana. I know they ain't coming to visit. They moved here. They moved, moved here from Indiana. Now, if you're coming from Gary, then I understand. <laughs> Cause I went to Gary, Indiana. Look at four rent on my left. Brand new buildings, four rent, new steps, new doorways, new everything. You get in a brand spanking new house out of the box. New everything, new countertops, new bathroom, new bedroom, new shower. I mean, everything, your kitchen. Everything is new. We're still in West Kensington, guys. We're on Howard and Huntington. And look at more new buildings right here. Now that's like some uh, apartments on my right. But we're gonna walk over here. And we got new buildings on my left too. As you can see. New buildings. What's up, buddy? Chilling, chilling. Yeah, Thanks, man. Yeah, glad to see you, bro. All right, bro. Be safe. Look at that classic right there. That classic right there is owned by the gentleman in this building right here on my left. This building on my left, you can you can sell your um. I'm gonna allow that cyclist to ride by, and then we're gonna cross. So that was Mr. Ortiz's classic car. This building right here on my left, he basically sells windows. He sells um, what do you call those things? The heaters, the cast iron heaters, the really heavy freaking heat heaters. Well, he, I think he buys and sells them. He collects them. He has a whole bunch of them. And you know, metal's worth money. So at the end of the day, you can always scrap the metal. So again, over here, as we continue to explore West Kensington, you're gonna see there's vacant lots. Now, I don't know if you noticed, the first block that we went on, 2200 block of Hancock. That block didn't have no lots like this. That block was full. And a lot of those houses are original. That's only three blocks from here. This block right here, they got a lot of empty lots. 
And some of them last second right there, they're making three new houses. This trash can right here had to be stolen from um, Fishtown because Fishtown was the one that started with those trash cans. That's basically a fish. That was on Frankfurt. On Frankfurt? Yeah, so I don't know if they took that drown, they picked it up and brought it over here and said, we like this trash can, it's ours now. <laughs> we got a huge lot on my right, we got people on my left listening to music, sitting outside. There's a car on my left driving by with music. There's another car on my left driving by bumping music. Now keep in mind, it is warm. If you want to know the time of day, it's about five o'clock. If you want to know the day of the week, it's a, I believe a Saturday. I believe today is Saturday. So it is hot to the point where people probably don't want to hang outside because it's too sticky. It's that type of day. It's one of those sticky days and it's supposed to rain. Look over here. See all the, the cardboards and everything? They're basically doing another property right here. Brand new four story monster building. Four story, look at this. Look at that, brand new. And then we got the empty lots right here. This was once a, a uh, little bar right here on my right. I forgot the name of it. Was it called El Cantifla? I don't even remember the name of this bar right here. I ain't never go to it, but one thing I didn't know, I think they used to sell Perico out of it. They used to sell powder from it. All the old heads in the neighborhood used to go to that spot. We got a church over here on my left. Baptist church. Wow, we got one boarded up building. You don't see many boarded up buildings here in West Kensington. I'm telling you, somebody must own that. They're just waiting on the perfect timing. No, I think that belongs to the church. It looks like it's still connected to the church. So a lot of these buildings when I had left, they weren't here yet or they were just being started. So I came back after the 48th state cross country tour 10 months later and a lot of these buildings are done. Yep, a lot of the buildings are done. Like for example, this, this wasn't there, not at all. Nope. And look what they did. They ended up putting a brace on the corner of that building. You see those brown, um, the, the bar that's going around the side of that building? That's a brace. See those three little um, pieces of metal with bolts going through it? That's to stop it from crumbling. Vinny house, so check it out. That's one of the uh, sharks of the neighbor. You can call him a shark, S-H-A-R-K, shark. Like a fish, that's one of the real estate sharks because he's buying up a lot of these homes. He's the one that owns it. Um, what's his name? I think his name is Vince Properties. I think that's, that's the business's name. Well, he's basically in, involved in a lot of these um, revitalization projects, basically flips and investments. Because I know I spoke to him and he bought a handful of properties in the area. He said he had like 13 of them. And that was almost two years ago I spoke to him, maybe a year and a half ago. <coughs> and he buys them and sells them. Yeah, so he'll either buy them and repair them, or if they're in really horrible shape, then he'll just do a full rehab. V real estate, V properties, Vince properties, something like right that. And all these new modern looking homes like this right here, this was an abandoned building on the corner. Look at they knocked it down, made a brand new one from scratch, from the ground up, from the frost up. They literally dug into the ground and this whole entire corner is new. And again, right here too, you see? Now these houses right here on Masher and York were also some of the homes that North Square was responsible for. That nonprofit organization, North Square, was responsible for about several different community projects in, in this community. They're responsible for about several different community projects. Let's make this right on York. Just so y'all can see a couple more that is being made on my right hand side. Now we're close to the front street. We're in West Kensington, but we're close to the front street. 
we can walk out to probably close to Fifth Street and still see some of West Kensington. But that borders Hard Tramp community in front of us and Fairhill. Fairhill is like at um, Fairhill. Is, there's a block called Fairhill, but then there's also a neighborhood called Fairhill. Fairhill is one of the notorious neighborhoods connected to the Badlands. So is West Kensington. There's several neighborhoods that come up under the Badlands territory sharp, um, that are classified by an author who wrote a book about the Badlands back in the 80s on 3rd in, in Indiana and 4th in um, Cambria. So, yeah. Now we're going to be crossing Hancock. I think I'm probably going to show y'all this block right here. I, I was going to cross, but this is the block that I want to show y'all right here. Again, more more houses. You see? La Linda's Elite House on, Lan on Hancock, luxury apartments. You see that? They call that Elite House on Hancock. And look what it looks like. Elite. They so hyped with that wording. Elite. Crazy, right? Now, the difference is if you go down to like uh, Old Kensington, you'll see a whole lot more of this. A whole lot more of it. Right here, you just see little pieces of it here and there. And make note that a lot of these homes aren't in the worst shape. Like, I know some of them probably looked a little rough, but a lot of the homes in West Kensington were actually in good shape. Look at that, those are new. That was an empty lot. See it? Brand new set of homes. These are all original armor, right? Most of them are in good shape. Look at this church right here. Church right here on my left. Iglesia of Pastilica. That's a Pentecostal church. So if you go up about two blocks, you'll hit Lehigh. When you hit Lehigh, you'll be leaving the West Kensington neighborhood. So for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna go two blocks forward because then we're gonna be hitting Fairhill and we're not covering Fairhill right now, but look it. Even from this corner, you can see the new buildings. And there's still a couple lots. There's a factory on the next block too that still hasn't really been uh, incorporated yet on hancock and cumberland this is a pentecostal church i believe it was once a jewish school earlier in its history now it is a pentecostal church a hispanic church this is another church right here across the street iglesia movimiento evangelisto pentecostal it's an evangelical Pentecostal uh, church. I'm going to make this left right here. You guys can see some of these back blocks. So as you may have noticed, there's not too many quote unquote zombies in this neighborhood. There's not really a lot of people walking around, drugged out of their mind. There's not a lot of people laying on the ground, sleeping. There is debris and there is trash, but it's on select blocks. The blocks with residents living on them, they're cared for. There's still a few uh, dozen lots or so that can be used. Right across in front of these houses, you got engine ladder number two. Right after these houses on the next block, it's a fire station. Look, this is a brand new house. This house wasn't here. When I left 10 months ago, this house was not complete. Look, at this house is complete. And you got another brand new house, you got the residence vehicle.
You got another one right here too, brand new one. You see it with all the vinyl siding? Got some graffiti. Yeah, so this is one of the cleaner Kensingtons. <laughs> it might not be the cleanest, but it's one of the cleaner ones. I'd say out of the four Kensingtons, the cleanest would probably be Old Kensington. That would probably be the cleanest. It's closer to Gerard, closer to Fishtown. The second cleanest would probably be East Kensington. The third cleanest would probably be West Kensington. The dirtiest would probably be traditional Kensington, AKA North Kensington. That would be the actual worst one. That's the one there you see that they're out there using drugs and they're laying in piles of trash. We're about to walk by another pump, another fire hydrant. They made some new houses on this little block too. So these houses on this little block are the ones that's selling for $380,000, $420,000. Now, mind you, you spend $380,000, you don't get a garage you barely even get a parking. You see how some of these people have to park on the sidewalk? A lot of the time they have to park on the sidewalk. It smells like they're having a grill. I smell like a cookout. They're having a little grill out session, am I right? Yeah, I see them. I smell the charcoal. They're over there having fun in the water. I'm gonna have to go over here through this water. Oh snap, oh, I got soaked. I got soaked. It was cold, it felt good too. And then when the breeze hit, oh, my legs feel good now. <laughs> my legs feel all uh, cool. So look at this on my left, this on my left again, three new projects. Three brand new projects. There was a lot right here that had a bunch of horses, like those little rocking chair horses. Well, this guy used to collect them. Matter of fact, look at there goes some of the rocking chair horses are on that pole. You see it up there? Could you imagine the whole entire yard filled with them? Well, guess what, guys? This whole entire yard was filled with those horses up there. He had probably over a hundred of those horses. And I guess he didn't own the full lot. Either he didn't own the full lot or he decided to sell some of the lot. And they built that there. This next block has a community garden that's maintained by the community, by one of the Browns, Iris Brown. See that garden right there in the corner? She's the caregiver, caretaker. This lot right here, this was all connected to that auto lot over there. And I think he separated it. He's probably gonna sell some, um, I'm gonna cross here. He's probably gonna sell some land eventually. So he wanted to segregate it. He probably didn't need that whole entire amount in order to sell cars, you only needed a piece of it. All right, so I look at it again, another new house. You see? Brand new house. And this is the community garden over here. So West Kensington has a handful of gardens that are managed and maintained by the community. You can even rent this. Like if you had a public event, if you had some type of festival, some type of party you wanted to do, you can contact them and rent it for your uh, for your meeting, class trip or something. Look at new building in between the old buildings and there goes two more new buildings. So this is Second Street. Second Street's a really popular, fast paced street. See space available, host your next community event, North Square. So this Cheney store here is very popular. It used to be owned by uh, two old folks and their nephew was Sonny. This Chinese on my left. His name was Sonny. He was probably Korean or Vietnamese or something. And he was married to a Puerto Rican lady. He had a mixed child, Puerto Rican and his, his Asian nationality. And he used to speak good Spanish. And he used to use Spanish seasonings for his food because his wife was Puerto Rican. So he used to use that in like his chicken wings and his totones and his chicken sandwiches. He would use his Hispanic seasonings. He spoke Spanish and he also distributed marijuana through the Chinos too. They, um, 
they raided that chinos a few times then his folks ended up selling it so now we got new owners right now we're approaching susquehanna close to where we started off the tour <laughs> 